All right. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. It's just me, Brendan. Isaiah Bankston. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. In these times of craziness. Hope things are well. Hoping everybody is doing good. Today, today, we are going to do some pumpkin carving. Ooh, snaps. Not like real life pumpkin carving, like digital pumpkin sculpting stuff. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have fun. And do some organic sculpting. Yeehaw. So that's what we're going to do. Everybody else doing good? Everybody doing good? Hey. This is where we are. And hopefully we'll make something cool. We'll see. <laughs> I haven't actually like sculpted sculpted uh, in in a little while. So um, we may be in the Valley of the Suck for most of the stream. So no, no pressure. None. None whatsoever. Um, but here we are. Uh, ZBrush. 2021, and of course my uh, Wacom is not wanting to work. Awesome. It was working a second ago. Why are you not working now? Let's get out of the car. Get back in the car. Dun, dun, dun. Of course. Why would why would you want to work? Hey, there we go. Was close. <laughs> All right, let's roll. So this is just a um, primitive. What's up, Marlin from Brazil? How are you? Hey, how are you? What's up? All right, we are. Um, we're gonna sculpt. We're gonna do the thing. Um, I usually just start out with a. Some kind of basic shape here. Good evening. Hello, Worst Gamer. I found you. So I'm just going to block out some super basic shapes. A pumpkin. Yay, we're done. Ship it. Um, all right, we're going to, how's everybody else doing? What's everybody? Oh my god, I haven't sculpted, sculpted. I've been doing so much, like, production art. Um, <laughs> it's been way too long since I've actually sculpted. So we're gonna, um, we're just gonna, we're gonna do the thing. Hang out, have fun. Let's see how bad we can do this. I know, right? Wait, you're sculpting? No way. You stop it with your sculpting even sculptorness. What's up, Carbon? Are you guys is everybody enjoying uh ZBrush twenty twenty one yet? I know I am. There are some cool stuff. There be some cool stuffs in there. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty cool. All right, let's just block it in. We want some shapes. Maybe we'll do a forehead. Large sunken eyes. I usually try to keep um, kind of a, as low as possible going forward. Um, let's throw some eyes in there. So let's just do uh, a pen, a pen, a sphere. Grab this guy. We'll move him over here. Scale him down.
Let's set them kind of wide apart. That's always a little bit freaky. Uh, mirroring well. Okay, cool. Now I got some some eyeballs to play with. I think you would just start. Happy little eyelids. Sculpt some happy little eyelids. Happy little eyelids. Look at that. I'm thinking like pumpkin head. Yeah. Like actual pumpkin head. I think we can go up one. Let's let's uh let's start our dynamesh. Dynameshness. One twenty eight. Mm, let's try fifty six. Let's see what that does. Not, not 24, 56. 50, hey. 56, not 5, 6. Thank you. My fingers are not working today. What's up, honey? How you guys doing? There we go. That should be okay for now. Um, so the goal is just kind of get some stuff going here. Um, and then we'll we'll paint it up as well. We'll do some um, poly poly paint by the end here. Kind of actually want this to come out. What's up, G-Man? How you doing? Doing well, I hope. Um, I guess the one of the first things we want to decide is are we going to do mouth open or mouth closed? Oh, that's a good question. I think we should do mouth open. Now let's do mouth closed. We only got a couple hours. Mouth open, I, I, I tend to like mouth open quite a bit. You can get a lot more detail in there, but only got a couple hours, so we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple. Slept in quite a bit. Oh, I'm jealous. I've got kids, so I don't sleep in very much. <laughs> not not much. Um, now let's go ahead and just block in some ideas here. All right, so we've got he's a pumpkin. No, I'm I'm just kind of I'm free willing it. Free willy. Oh, this is all off the cuff. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's get some separation of the lip. And the zygoma. Looks like he's biting his lip, huh? Yep, today we're just we're just winging it. We're gonna see what we can do here. See what we can do. Anybody else working on cool stuff? Looks like an alien now. We don't do alien. Maybe these guys should be a little bit smaller. Let's do X. Um. I just, uh, just uh, pumpkins in general for reference. Just kind of looking at some sad pumpkins and um, kind of seeing 
see what we do. We're just kind of making stuff up as we go here. Let's see. See how things go. It's a little, um, I say, a little nerve wracking, I guess. Not really knowing what exactly you're doing, but we're gonna have fun. All right, I think it's, uh, I think that's probably good enough to start kind of digging in. Taking an anatomy class, that is always a great idea. Always. I think even even as you grow as an artist um, and as a professional artist, you should still you should still take anatomy classes. Um, I try to as much as I can. Um, I don't really have time for classes at the moment, but I, I do try to at least once a year do a full kind of um, test, <laughs> I guess you could say where I, I tried to do kind of all the whole body um, together at the same time. Just to kind of keep my memory fresh, keep my practice. Okay, so maybe we have some of the lines come down. Maybe this one comes back this way. Kind of cuts in there. Uh, while you're modeling, would you please uh, brief character design for games? Do you sculpt in ZBrush? Um, I'm new to the industry. Have a pro's opinion? Yeah, sure. Um, you know the basic flow is um, doing some. Well, it you know really depends on if you're doing organic or you're doing hard surface model um, but typically for organic um, I usually start in ZBrush I do as much of the the pre-production you know the sculpting and and uh, kind of laying out of everything in ZBrush first um, and then once the sculpt looks good uh, you can go in and um, do the low poly model for it so uh, retopo is where that comes in and then once you have your topology done then you can set up all of your UVs once your UVs are set up then you bake um, all of your high-res information down to your low-res uh, using maps so like uh, normal maps roughness maps um, so on uh, so let's go to 128. Let's let's up the resolution a little bit. I think we're we're at at that point. There we go. Now we can start playing around with some more shapes in here. Um, so then you know you're baking, baking all of your maps. Um, from there you, you're using those maps as uh, for materials. So you go through all of your materializing, um, substance painter. Um, and once that's all done, then you've got your model. Set it up in your engine. So whichever engine that you're planning on, um, for my personal stuff, I, I just, uh, I build towards Marmoset tool bag. It's just, um, for me, it's just easier to use Marmoset. Okay, so now I'm, I'm kind of starting, I'm, I'm a little bit into uh, secondary shapes, um, kind of getting out of the whole primary shape era, or area, uh, and I'm starting to kind of establish what some of these bigger secondary shapes are. So I'm just kind of looking at um, my silhouette. Is it interesting? You know, what's the overall read? And it's not mean enough. So I'm gonna 
focus on trying to kind of make it a little bit more mean. So to do that, you can just furrow the brow more. All right, and then pull those eyes down, right? Whenever you have a uh, kind of downward movement in the brow and this angle down on the inside of the eye, um, it's typically a little bit meaner. Mo meaner. Mo mina. Okay, and I think maybe starting to come up with some of the you know what what is the skin doing what's the style of the skin you know is it is it porous is it stringy is it need a worm prop popping out somewhere yeah i think so i think the worms worms are good um so is this guy gonna have an no nose is he gonna have an actual nose i think i think the no nose is always a little scarier We're going to go with no nose. Who knows no nose? Bo knows nose nose. You guys remember the Bo nose uh, from the 80s football? Half nose. Yeah. Bo Jackson. So I'm thinking maybe it'd be. Uh, I kind of want to break up. Um, the edges and then maybe what we'll do is instead of just having the mouth kind of go there I always think it's super super creepy when the mouth like goes really uncomfortably way far back like that that's always way more creepy of course it looks like a grandma with uh, without enough teeth <laughs> um, I think we should at this point start establishing the chin though what does that profile feel like? Is it a long chin? Is it a short chin? Does it stick out? Does it pull back? That's kind of cool. So I'm just looking at these shapes, right? So I'm looking at the silhouette, seeing how all these read kind of in, in the three dimensions. It's starting to kind of look cool. This looks like a old granny witch pumpkin and then usually at about this time I start I start thinking about like okay what's what's the personality of of this character you know is it is it a joker is it a you know um, what is it it's a good question I don't know what it is yet I'm trying to think let me get on You know, is it sneaky scary? Is it kind of in your face um, scary? Is it does it hide in the backgrounds, or does it like exist out in you know, out in the light? That's, that's looking kind of cool. Let's do it even further though. Like maybe, maybe the head's like this big, and then the mouth like goes like real crazy, like like back to here. <laughs> That's cool. Um, question about Dynamesh and Z Mesher workflow. Do you normally use Dynamesh until you have your design silhouette down and then use Z Remesher in order to add more tertiary details to the sub divs? Yes, that's pretty much exactly what I do. Uh, depending on uh, like a, on a character like this, this is that's probably exactly what I would do. Um, the only time I kind of defer from that is when you start, you know, when you when you add subdivisions, right? You use Z remesh, add subdivisions, and then you know uh, project down back to your your uh, Dynamesh version. Uh, sometimes your model is too big. You know what I mean? Like it's like um, the 
area is too big to hold uh, all the polys that you really want. So then I would I would plan around that. So like maybe I would I would break this piece off into its own and then have this one uh, as a separate piece. Where and then I would save all of the um, geo that's going to be in this one uh, and then put it into this. You know what I mean? Yeah, he does look old. And that's because the um... all right. Yeah, now we got to start kind of defining what some of these secondary shapes are going to be. I always think it's super creepy whenever like there's like those little, you know, growths and stuff on those pumpkins. They look really, really gross. Um, so I really want to establish what the teeth are going to be next, right? So you have a couple of main things that you really want to establish quickly. Um, and those are the, the main characteristics of whatever the character is, right? So in this one, it's, um, okay, it's a pumpkin. Uh, he's got, you know, these vertical lines that go throughout. And then some scary face and then teeth, right? What are the teeth doing? That's another kind of big thing to, to try to to try to get. And maybe, maybe this is not like a full mouth. Maybe this is like kind of broken up in the in the secondary primary shapes here. I got a little hook back there too. All right, and we got typically around the corner of the lips, uh, you have like a little build up there. Just trying to kind of get some of those secondary shapes, at least kind of planned out here, right? So we got, I, I, I'm also looking at, you know, in these areas, right? There's, there's two main things that I'm always looking at. I'm always looking at the silhouette and then how the light is playing off of the shapes on the inside, right? So I'm, I'm always looking at those two things. So when I turn it, I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. It's kind of sticking out on the, uh, the sides. And then when I'm looking in here, I'm looking at how's the how's the light playing off of my shapes, right? Is it if I'm looking here like this, I don't really have a lot of darks in here, right? So maybe I can start pushing pushing things in more, right? And you start getting a, lo a lot more contrast um, in those shapes, right? So you don't you don't just see how like all of this is just flat, right? And then you're like, oh, I'm gonna sculpt on that. Okay, cool, and then you know, it's it's just kind of it's kind of flat. So I'm I'm looking at the the light values um, as I'm as I'm going, right? So this is much more interesting because it's got some subtle things happening, uh, and then darker things happening. So I try to get a um, a good range of shadow values, like within the whole piece. Does that kind of make sense? Right. So like if you're just kind of doing stuff like this. You're like, oh, oh that, that's cool, but like it need, it needs more depth, right? So like depth, when I say depth, I, I mean variation from where this plane is to things that are deeper, right? So like this, right? You're looking at, um, you know, the shadows are much more intense in here or in pumpkin. <laughs> um and then what are the what is the light doing as it's kind of flowing over some of these, right? If you look at, at this, you're like, okay, yeah, that's cool. It's got a little bit of something. But as you start um, kind of getting into these secondary shapes um, and how those uh, are kind of feeding off of the light, and you start playing with much more dynamicness. I made that word up just now. All right, so maybe we'll break that up. And that's how you get start getting really kind of interesting um, shapes happening all over. And it, it just adds more um, for your eye, eyes to like look at, right? It makes things much more interesting. So I'm always looking at those, those two things. I'm looking at the silhouette and then I'm looking at my light values, um, shadow. Is there enough variation? You know, is there, is there, is there pleasantness to the, breakup of these, right? So like I got some good highlights, I've got some good darks. 
you know, maybe it obviously this stuff this needs stuff back here. So what does it need? I think it needs a back of a jaw, really. Let's let's give him back of the jaw back here. Alright, so now now we've got a little bit more of a highlight here instead of it falling underneath. Okay. So I think the next thing we really gotta do is start nailing what what the teeth are gonna do. So I'm just gonna think about like what the the outside shape secondary shapes kind of look like, right? So we wanna make sure that we're it, adhering to the style guide of a pumpkin, which is these vertical lines, right? Yes, I think about how uh, the mechanics as well too, right? Like how does how does this move, right? So um, right now I'm just kind of thinking about what does the design shape look like, you know? Is it does it come does it come super wide, like this, you know? Or is it like does it hide behind the face, you know? Like does it come back here like this? That's kind of cool. No, it's not. That's that's gross. <laughs> so, uh, you know, then, you know, what kind of shape do you want the jaw to be? Is it super angular? Is it... Alright, so now I'm thinking, like, okay, now I got what the base shape would would kind of be, like the resting... So how would it, how would it actually open? You need some kind of neck or throat, right, for it to open. So maybe instead of, but it, it is a pumpkin, so it's not like a, a, a head that looks like a pumpkin on something. Maybe it just has kind of this more flat base down here. Oops, wrong one. Oh, I'm going to crash. Craig, what's up, buddy? I'm gonna crash. Am I gonna crash? Let's save as. Let me save this real quick, and then I may have to restart it. Um, let's do that. Let's do pumpkin. Demon guy, dude. Pumpkin, demon guy, dude. There we go. All right, now it's maybe it just needed to catch up, but I wanted to save it anyways. Um, you also think about archetypes too, right? Like um, usually, you know, do, do you want it to feel strong? Do you want it to feel kind of weak? Um, then you can start looking at different types of personalities. Like, is, is it a strong jaw? Is it a long Long chin. All kinds of fun stuff. But I think we need to start looking at the teeth. I kind of like it back there like that. That was a little bit more personality to it. All right. So um, usually for teeth, uh, there's a couple ways you could do it. There's actually probably a ton of ways you could do it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Craig. Uh Let's do insert mesh. So um, we do brush insert, BI, um, and then we'll just grab primitives. And then I'm just going to grab a sphere. I'll just drag a sphere in there. And then I'll just use my move tool and just say, okay, what, is, what, is, what do teeth look like on this guy? Are they big, fat teeth? Are they super skinny teeth? Are they curvy teeth? Are they straight teeth? Is it a lot of teeth? Is it... Angled teeth. There's all kinds of fun things that you can try. And uh, teeth have a, you know, create a big personality for for a creature. Especially a scary kind of predator style. Ooh, predator. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm just going to add some more. So BI, so brush insert, go back to my insert brush. 
And I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna start throwing some in. Um, and I'm purposefully not going to like duplicate things out because I want the there to be a nice difference in the size, right? So like uh, what I I'm purposefully trying to make these different sizes by not duplicating them. Yeah, maybe he's got smaller ones up here. Yeah, he's starting to look dope. All right, so let's clear the mask. So now what, um, you know, if you look at this, this is all just on the same subtool. So you're like, all right, well, either you can break them out and manage them separately, or um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my move brush, which is move topological. So if you go to B for brush, B for brush, M for move, uh, it's V right here. So it's move topological. So the difference between move and move topological is uh, whatever I click on, it will only affect that mesh, right? So I can move this one, I can move this one. It's dependent on whatever I click on. Whereas if I just use move, which I have it, hey, move, then it's going to move everything together. See that? So I like to go back and forth between those. So I have move and move topological down here, but most of the times I just use move topological. Ooh. Oh, this is why live is awesome. You're like, oh, I duplicated it. What do I do? How do I get rid of that thing? Oh no, I can't. Uh, what? Eh, it won't go anywhere. Uh, it's easy. So the way that ZBrush is, is that all of your, you can think it as kind of like a divorced system where the, the 3D model that you're working on is separate from the document it's living in right now. So um, the tool, which is this, this guy right here, contains all of your subtools. And those subtools uh, contain all of your active um, history. And it's per subtool. So this one has different than this one. I know you guys, most of you guys know this, almost everybody, but just in case there's some newies. Um, so, you know, all of that information, the sculpting information, the history information is embedded into each subtool of your tool. So technically what happened was I dropped this one to the background or to the document and then pick this one back up. So all you have to do is go to document, just go new document. Document has been changed. You want to change it? Nope. Right? So you're like, oh my god, where'd it go? It's okay. Your tool's still here. All of your um, all of your history is there. So you just drop it back in. Uh, hit T for edit. And then you're back. Right? All that stuff is still saved. Um, so one of the things that I want to do is I want to use the smoothing function uh, to control um, the thickness of some of these teeth. There's a couple ways you could do that. If you look at the polyframes, um, whenever you insert a new uh, mesh, it gives it a new poly group. There's a couple ways you could do this. You can go into the, the settings for your smooth and say smooth for... Um, by poly group, or you could just do it really quickly and just use your move tool and say, um, if you have a move tool selected, you can just control click. Um, and because it's a different poly group, it will automatically mask everything but that poly group. So now I can just So if I want to make it smaller, I can rotate this guy around. Maybe it's like an orc pumpkin head. Okay, so uh, let's get the teeth rolling. We're already 36 minutes in. So for the teeth, right? So let me clear the mask. So for the teeth, man, teeth. 
you know what? Maybe I do want to. I want to break all these guys up. Let's do that. So, go to the mask. I'm just going to hide this. Okay, all those guys. I'm going to switch, invert my that, and then uh, we'll do split hidden. So now it's on a its own sub tool here. Now what I want, because I did that because I want to start kind of um, sculpting around these meshes, and I don't want it to affect um, the actual mesh. So now I could just kind of switch back and forth here. That's kind of a cool shape. I'm just like, and again, I'm just everything. Everything you try to sculpt, like look at the silhouette. Is it interesting on all rounds, right? Like, is it interesting from this side? Is it interesting from this way? Yeah, that's cool, right? You got like two thirds here, and then eh, it's more like half. Um, you know, you've got maybe that maybe this guy needs to come out just a little bit here, right? So we've got kind of straight and then bendy, and then we got this kind of cool thing happening in here. Yeah, that's cool. Because ultimately, what I, I what I want is I don't want there to be a bad angle from for this guy. So everywhere a, everywhere that you rotate um, is something cool happening. You know, like what's the distance between this guy and this guy? Is it kind of getting in the way of that three quarter view? Kind of. Maybe we can just pull it out just a little bit here, right? Because when I rotate around, I still want to be able to have this nice. Um, three quarter, right? So I'm looking at what is this negative space in here? That's kind of cool, right? So then we have to have some kind of supporting structure for the tooth to actually sit in. Now the question is, what is the upper teeth going to do? <laughs> I have no idea. Let's give it some room in here. We're just going to kind of go to town on some of these shapes here. See if we can come up with some interesting stuff. So you see, like, by kind of doing these differently each time you you get this this nice like organic feel because you, you can't sculpt it so it's, it's impossible to do the same thing twice exactly you know so it's kind of given this nice dynamicness I don't really want those to go out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my move tool these are all different poly groups so I'm just going to control click on that one and then just rotate them in like this. Like that. Cool. Um, what you could do too is, you know, you could just continue doing this and have fun kind of making unique shapes. Or if you like specific shapes that you've done, like these, this guy's actually pretty cool. Kind of like how that shape turned out, um, then you could just do those particular ones. Do those particular ones. What does that even mean? Brendan, stop using words. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe these guys go straight out. That's kind of cool. And then um, let's build in some supporting structure here. I think he needs a little bit more of a chin. He's got like this kind of hooked chin. <laughs> That's looking cool. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay, so I like these guys. So let's uh, control click on those guys. And because they are a different poly group, um, you can do control alt and then just move it over like this and that will duplicate them. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Um, alt to unlock. I'm going to move the pivot down there, and then we're just going to kind of rotate these guys around, give them a little bit 
differentness. A little differentness. And then I'm just going to stretch it out just a touch. Oops. Back. Right. So you can use it as a base and then, you know, keep, kind of keep going from there. Even though it's uh, now different, you know. I do kind of like the knife feel of those. Okay. And then because that one is still, um, it is still masked, I can do Control Alt again. Differentness. All the differentness. But how do you make good differentnesses? Oh, that's a good that's a good question, Jimmy. You know, yeah, oh yeah, they're also not on the same row. Look at that. That's cool. You know, maybe they're maybe this one starts back there. <laughs> yeah. I miss sculpting. Right again, so I'm I'm looking at the silhouette, right? What is what it, what are the shapes doing? Um, is it interesting at, at all rotations? You know, like I'm, you're kind of getting like this, this, you know, they're not all in a line. They're kind of giving a nice little variation to which way they're pointing. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's let's keep rolling. What do you do when you sculpt something hollow like a mouth? Um, what I would do is I would I would break up um, this model. I would do exactly like this. So I would go um, just assign a, a poly group, right? So let's just mask all of this, right? And it's um, we're on symmetry, so it's going to mask the same on that side. Right, and then uh, what I would do is uh, in polygroup I would just do group masked, like that, and then now I can just hide that one. Right, so if I if I do that, right, so then you can um, you can say right, say you want to start sculpting in that stuff in there. Start pulling this stuff back like this, right? And then redynamesh. Right, that's what I would do. So I would, I would start kind of getting some of those areas pushed in, like that. And then you can, you know, redo your, um, your, your division of polygroups again too, right? So like once you start kind of getting all this stuff back there. Like, uh, okay, I want I want all this stuff to kind of come back further. Oops. Like this. All right, now I'm starting to create some space in there. And then I would just say, um, let's redo that. So now I'm going to come in and just re reset up that division of polygroups. And then we'll just do group mast again. All right, so now I have stuff. I have areas that I can go in and I can sculpt in here. sculpt in here which is good because I kind of want to have some supporting geo in here as well I 
Like that. That's what I would do. So the question is, what are the top teeth going to do? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a real good question. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. To make it a little bit quicker, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to duplicate the whole thing. Because I just want to... I want to take all of these teeth right here. So I'm going to duplicate the whole thing. All right. Uh, and then we're going to hide... All of that. So I just want those ones, uh, and then I'm going to delete hidden, and then I'm going to, let's turn off symmetry, alright, so this is a, a quick way you can do some stuff. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe maybe um the the face needs to get adjusted now actually. Maybe we can actually pull this guy up. And that can live like that. Oh, that's cool. All right, this guy's turning out. This guy's turning out pretty cool. Um but I don't want it to be an exact replica, right? Like I want those to um Wanted to be a little bit different, but now all I have to do is just, you know, go move topological, and then I could just start kind of nudging these guys around a little bit. Um, you're like, oh crap! I forgot to turn on symmetry. That's easy. Just do, um, not mirror and weld because I want to actually take this side. So I'll do mirror first. Mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. All right, and then I can just let's turn on symmetry this time. Hey, there we go. All right, you can just kind of move stuff around a little bit and kind of readjust. Um, you can turn on ghosting, which is in transform transparency ghost. Um, that way I can, I can really start seeing the stuff underneath. Maybe these guys need to point in and be a little sharper. Yeah, that's cool. All right, um, let's get back to supporting some supporting geo here. Okay, cool. Let's or supporting shapes, I should say. Maybe this goes in like that. Ooh, that's cool. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, so then I'm varying up where the where the teeth uh like come out of, right? So maybe it's not actually coming out from you know inside the mouth. Maybe they're like actually growing out of his face as well. You know, and then we can get some of these shapes kind of going back like this. Okay, let's make sure that we still got our pumpkin line. Okay, cool. The line does not go into this area, so I'm just going to sculpt that back up real quick. Let's get this on a separate level. Okay, now let's, let's start focusing on, here's some things that are bother me. Um, so I, I try to uh, do the, I, I look at all things in the layer, layer cake um, fashion, which is small, medium, and large shapes. But I, I, look, at, I look at those 
across the board, right? So I look at those in negative shapes, I look at those in positive shapes, I look at those in um, the amount of depth, right? How much shadow is there? Um, you know, repeating shapes on a silhouette, right? So here's one of the things that's really kind of bugging me is like, we've got this shape, we've got this shape, and we've got this shape here, which is all very similar, right? So you kind of got this like repeating and I don't really like it very much, right? It's like the distance from here to here, to here to here, and from here to here are all the same, right? So instead, if you vary them, those shapes up and say, okay, maybe maybe we'll do small, medium, large, right? So maybe, maybe this will be small. This, th from here to here will be smaller, right? Maybe this one will be medium, but maybe this one will be large. Right? Maybe this actually comes out. All right, so now you've got small, medium, large, right? You've got medium from here to here, small from here to here, and large from here to here. All right, so I, I look at those all over the place from every single angle. Um, n not only just, you know, where you're, uh, where you're digging in, but like, you know, what are your your shapes, your planes, right? So like this area, pretty close to the size of this area. But there's no third one that is the same, so it, eh, it's okay. I think it's okay. I think if this one wasn't here, right? If we had, if we had this, and it starts to look a little, eh, because you've got this, this plane, or this area of light, this area of light, and this area of light is fairly similar. But because that's broken up, you don't get that effect as much. Does that make sense at all? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I try to say what's on my mind and what I look at and stuff. It just comes out weird. I think I like this guy. So let's, I'm gonna duplicate this guy off. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Maybe he's got, yeah, no boobs for this guy. Boobs are round shapes. He does not have very many pleasing round shapes. He's much more of an angular, sharp shape kind of guy. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at looking at the silhouette. Is it so it's, I'm starting to kind of get same same shapeies. So I'm trying to see if there's a good <laughs> I mean they're good. Don't get me wrong. Like I you know I Should they go out like that? Maybe what I can do is, whoa, easy buddy. Yeah, that one's going to bug me for a little bit. Well, maybe we'll just size this guy down. Maybe he's just too... See, just, it doesn't feel right, you know? So you got to make sure that like, it feels interesting um, in all respects, in all... Uh, the other thing I'm looking at, too, is the distance between each one of these guys. You know, like, right now, the distance between this one and this one and this one and this one are kind of samesy, you know? Like, you got the distance from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, all feels the same. 
So like it's, eh, it's, eh, yeah, maybe it's, it's kind of gross. It's kind of throwing me off a little bit. So maybe we'll vary that up a little bit. Okay, maybe we'll grab this guy. Maybe we'll pull him back. Whoa, what's going on? Sometimes when you start going a little too fast, the um, poly groups start messing up a little bit. So whenever that happens and I'm trying to duplicate things, like that just happened, um, what I'll do is I'll... Everything's still symmetrical, so let's just do auto groups. Auto groups will do asymmetrical, right? But then if I just do mirror and weld, then um, they're all separate now and the same on, on either side. So now when I go move, I can just control click and then I can do that. That's what I want. That's what I want. So we're just going to vary this up a little bit. Maybe he's got another tooth coming out from here. This tooth is really bugging me. Really don't like that tooth at all. So let's fix it. I'm gonna wreck it. So how are my angles? That feels okay, that feels okay, that feels okay. All right. Oops. Go back to this guy, add some supporting structures down here. some in here, some in there. Start kind of getting some surface variation through here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like it. Okay, any other big things that we need to fix? Um, I don't really like this super straight line right here that's happening from that angle. So we've got the line coming like this and then continuing down like that. What if we what if we just scoot this over a touch like this? All right, so that I still got I got a straight line here. So maybe if we break that up a little bit like that. Right, so now it's not straight that way. It's not straight this way. Yeah, I like that better. Maybe we can just actually pull this guy in too a little bit, get a little bit of variation there. Still a little bit straight, but I, th I think that's okay. That feels a little better. Maybe this whole thing can come back just a touch. still want this line to be somewhat vertical and straight-ish uh, because you don't want to lose too much of the characteristic of what those pumpkin lines are. Cool. Um, let's see if we just... we can add a little bit more up here so that, so that we got kind of this like ridge line coming like that so I'd like to break that up just a little bit maybe this is this surface comes out just a little bit more All right so um, now I'm, I'm also looking at the characteristic of what these um, what these curves are what these bevels are 
right? Is it flat plane, tight curve, flat plane, tight curve? Or is it more like this where it's gentle curve, gentle curve, gentle curve? Kind of like that a little bit better. So I'm going to try to just pull down a little bit of that, those corners, and then pull the surface of this out a little bit. All right, and now I'm looking at how the light is reflecting off of that now. All right, so it's kind of doing this nice gentle roll over that surface now, which is, is kind of cool. All right, how are we looking on time? All right, we're at one hour in. We got one hour left. So I think it's I think we're at a point now where um, most of my primary and secondary shapes are looking pretty good. I, li I like the overall feel of him. I still think we need a little bit more teeth coming back here. So let's do that guy real quick. What is the best brush to sculpt a lot of small detail in ZBrush? Um, it's, I, I would say it's not really a single brush. It's more about uh, um, you know, what, the, what are the characteristics of your of your surface in your you know, making sure that your primary, secondary uh, shapes are really, really solid first, and then uh, go into tertiary detail. I always try to make sure that those are all nailed down real good. Um, and then, like, your surface detail then just kind of becomes uh, an additive component to your already strong base. So let's add let's add a couple more teeth back up here, and then I think we're we're good to kind of dive in to uh, tertiary details. So let's grab that. So I'm going to duplicate this whole thing. Uh, I'm going to turn my symmetry off, and I'm just going to work on this side for right now. So I want to get a lot of teeth really quickly. So what I'm going to do is I want all these to be separate. So I'm going to clear my mask. I'm going to do auto groups right now that I can. So it has kind of this roundness to it. it, has this roundness to it. And I don't want it to be, I kind of want it to be flat so I can get it in this, in this area co quite quickly. So. I'm just going to use my um, control click to kind of move these to a little bit more flat. And then take an opportunity to kind of vary them up a little bit from where they were. And I'm purposefully uh, just kind of doing them randomly so that I get some nice variation in there. Okay, I think this guy needs to come that way a little bit. This guy, that one's okay. This guy to come this way just a touch okay I like the varying height okay cool that's I think that's okay and then we'll just slam this whole thing over here and see what we got again turning on transparency with ghosting that's kind of cool <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous. Okay, cool. Let's grab this guy. Then we can start just getting these a little bit more specific in those areas. Let's grab that dude. This guy. 
I'm going to move him out of this little trench. I don't want him interfering with that design. Yeah, that's cool. Ooh. Okay. Um, just some quick supporting. Shapes in here. Everybody still with me? Yeah, that's cool. Except now we got this this little intersection happening, which I don't really want. So I'm going to grab that guy, and we'll just maybe we'll put him over here. Feels good. Feels good, bro. It's like coming out of his face. Bro, your face. Cool. I like that. So then we're going to grab this guy. Let's do mirror, mirror and weld. We got those on both sides. Yeah. All right. Let's get into some further detail. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to rip this dude off into its own because I want to start adding more detail and I don't want to kind of Anything that I can take off that is okay to have some kind of uh, seam on it that doesn't have to be kind of connected, uh, I want to go ahead and do now. Oh, I haven't done it from the top. That was cool. Here's how we're going to do it. Um, so this is this is a Dynamesh. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to use masking to um, put a new polygroup on this area. And then I'm just going to split that off and then redynamesh, uh, and then we'll close those holes. So that's good. And then we'll just grab my handy dandy. It didn't work though because it's mirrored. Okay, that's cool. And then I can do um, group mast or just uh, control W will give you a new poly group for uh, what do you have mast. So let's just split this guy off. Split hidden. Cool. And then this guy, right, he's got this giant hole in his head now. If I just redynamesh it, it'll close the holes. <gasps> Now what I can do is I can all right. So the question is, how do you close that hole without it um, getting all kind of jacked up? And that's where I say, good question. Let's do display properties double so I can see both sides here. So I could just try it, and that's okay. But if this is a flat area, um, then you may have some of these kind of weird things happening. So like, how do you get rid of the weird artifacting on the side? Like, how do you get rid of this? Uh, typically what I'll do is I'll just use inflate. And I'll just inflate the crap out of these. Redyna mesh, smooth out. Just like that. So inflate. Redynamesh, smooth out. Sometimes you gotta do it a couple of times. Redynamesh, there we go. So that's okay. And then I can just come in and just kind of move this back into place. Like that. Now I can subdivide this guy a bunch um, and it can have its own. And then I can subdivide um, the base 
and it will also have its own. It doesn't have to take into account all of these polys that um, are going to be used somewhere else. All right, so let's maybe we'll have a nice little lip action going in here. I didn't lose um, chat, right? You guys are still there. I think you're just enthralled with the pumpkinness. I'm about ready to start going up in uh, subdivisions here. One, two, three. Okay, cool. That was good. Uh, but before I do, I want to just kind of get a little bit of more surface variation happening. Um, See, so I can still get some of this nice, this nice info without having to go too deep into subdivisions. So I, I like to keep lower subdivisions as long as I can. So you can still get quite a bit of a detail. All right. Um, so let's start uh, doing smaller secondary details in here. Where we have kind of this stuff happening. And again, I'm when I'm doing um, these small, smaller details, I'm, I'm still thinking about small, medium, and large shapes. So I want to make sure that um, I'm sticking with that and things look as dynamic as possible. There's still a lot, a lot we can do with, with before we start subdividing. Still trying to adhere to small, medium, and large shapes. So that these kind of breakup things are more dynamic and organic. definitely miss <laughs> sculpting you know like it's uh it can be I wouldn't say tedious but um, it can be challenging at times but you know you stick to your your core skills and um, you know practice your stick to itiveness then uh, things things still turn out pretty good Three AM. Woo. Well thanks for sticking through the uh the midnight hours with me. Um I'm honored and flattered. Um I'm not gonna do the back right now, um just because we're on a limited time. I got about forty five minutes left. Uh, and I want to kind of paint this guy up a little bit. So um, before, although I do want to have some kind of like three quarter. So I want to make sure that at least whatever is going to be in that three quarter is is good. So let's let's add a little bit more back here.
just going to add some surface variation. See what what we can get. Um, I want a little bit more roundness in my in my sculpt on some of these planes. So instead of uh, the square, I'm just going to put this over to uh, like a circle. And that'll help kind of give me a little bit more roundness on that surface. Um, maybe you can even change it to more fall off like that. Right. So then now when I do that, it's almost like the standard brush, um, but I, I really like the the clay buildup uh, better. All right. So I'm starting to get not enough information in here. Um, so that's usually when I'll say, uh, OK, let's let's hold off on doing anything more in those areas until I get more. So I want to make sure that um, I've got I, I push it as far as I can go before going to the next subdivision level. Really want to have a nice kind of lip here. To really emphasize the um, the stem. Does he still feel like a pumpkin? Yes, he still feels like a pumpkin, which is good. So that's um, you know what? I probably should probably should work on this guy a little bit. Whoa! Uh, some some of the other cool things that I like doing is uh, you know, like if I'm if I'm sculpting towards the silhouette, I could just come in and lock the camera real quick, and that camera lock is in uh, draw lock camera. If you go into draw, you can lock the camera right here. Which is pretty cool because then now I can just I can sculpt off the edge here like this. I don't have to worry about it um, rotating the camera when I start here, right? When I start there like this, which is super handy. Oh, I love it. Um, I really want to get it into a a shortcut. Uh, keyboard shortcut, but I just haven't, I haven't have found the time yet. It doesn't take much time, but for me it does. Okay, leave me alone. I think what I'm going to do is um, this is too thin, so I'm just going to inflate the bottom. But that's also going to inflate the top. So I can do is use back face mask, and this is in brush auto masking back face mask. So if you're in brush auto masking back face. I'm going to turn on back face. And what that's going to do is it's not going to affect this side over here. So I just want to have a little bit more sculpting room. So I'm going to give myself a little more room. And that shouldn't really be affecting this side. Sometimes it does if you if you come to here it will. Um, but it tries its it tries its best. So I'm just going to give myself some room. Okay, redynamesh real quick, and then I think this guy is ready to go up to 256. So we'll go 256. Right. So here's here's something that happens quite a lot that took me a long time to figure out. Like, okay, I went up to 256, but when I redynamesh, it doesn't like go up. Why? I don't know. Uh, there's a quick fix for it. It's a dirty fix. But all I have to do is is change the surface in some way. So usually what I'll do is I'll just like smooth something real quick and then re-dyna mesh. And then it will pick up. So you have to do some kind of edit to the mesh uh, for it to say, oh, I need to do something else to it. Hopefully that makes sense.
Now, I haven't broken symmetry yet, um, mostly because I'm I'm still trying to kind of just get most of the shapes in there. Uh, once once I have a good amount of details that I like, um, then I'll start breaking symmetry later. Right now, I'm just kind of trying to go quick and quick and fast. Um, so let's, let's finish doing some stuff back here. Maybe we'll add a little bit of surface variation. I'm going to go back to my square. So I like when I'm doing kind of bigger things like this, when it's just kind of chunky, I like that, the, that little bit of tooth that, that, that has to it. Cause, uh, gives some nice subtleties. Like when you go through and just smooth things out real quick you get some some happy accidents happening so more happy accidents the better cool and then maybe we'll add some some of the smaller details in here just try to get those this surface acting similar to that surface kind of family that Again, I'm looking at big, uh, medium, small, sh large shapes. Charge, sparge. We'll get some warts going on in here too. Now I want to be real careful with landmarks because uh, once you start making landmarks that are symmetrical, your eye can tell really, really quickly. So I'm not quite ready to to break symmetry yet. So I'm going to wait to do those as, until closer to the end. But I think I think we're ready. Let's go. So let's go up in one more res. So let's take this to this 120. So we'll go 256. Okay, we'll just do that, and then we'll redynamish. Cool. Um, whenever I go up, I like to just at least just test out um, clay polish. So just to do a clay, quick clay polish. And a lot of times that really helps um, take out some of those, right? So like some of the artifacting that happens, like these guys in here, these guys in here. Right, it really helps kind of set a, a nice base to take uh, tertiary detail even further. So I, I typically like doing that. Or if you do, if you don't like that, you can play at the levels or sometimes you can just be super, super gross about it and just say, uh, okay, cool. We'll do that. And then we'll do clay polish. Okay, cool. That looks good and all. But maybe I don't like it that much. Well, then just pull your, pull it back a little bit. All right, and then you can do it to taste. I like that. Okay, cool. Bake it. Done. Move on. So that's fun. I like doing that guy too. All right. So now let's kind of get into some of these. more important areas first in case you run out of time you want to have your important areas done first so we'll do around the eyes so we're just going to kind of start pronouncing some of these areas and then maybe at a point where you know maybe it's time to zero mesh and um, Reproject. I think I want to do a little bit more on the nose shapes first, though. 
really want to push this back in. Because once you zero mesh and reproject, <coughs> excuse me, and reproject, um, you really can't do a whole lot of uh, big shape stuff anymore. It's really kind of smaller shape things. So I'm just, I kind of want to play around with the nose here just a little bit to see if I need any of that, because I do for that. So we're just going to read Dynamash real quick for that. Then I think I'm going to paint black in there, so I'm not too worried about it being... I do want to have a little bit more interesting breakup through here though, because it just actually comes like that. Maybe we've got kind of this that kind of thing happening. Cool. I think we will do some more of these just vertical lines through here. That's kind of his characteristic is these vertical thinner smaller lines. Okay, let's dine mesh one more time. Alright, so how how do you take it and do the next level, right? So a lot of people a lot of people go, Oh, how do you do that? I don't know. I didn't know for a long time either. Maybe I'll just resolve a little bit of this in here real quick. Okay. We'll go uh, group visible. Group visible. Okay. It's kind of a, a, a last moment to to really do any kind of bigger changes. So I, really, I like going through and just making sure that time is right. Okay, it is. All right, so usually what I like doing is saving it first. <laughs> Pumpkin Demon Guy Dude is what we're calling this guy. Um, can you start learning with a tablet and mouse? Yes, I, absolutely. Uh, I still use tablet and mouse quite a bit uh, for this when I'm doing like hard surface work. Um, it's just much easier to control. So like if you're if you're doing stuff like this where you're trying to like pick faces or or uh, points or ver vertexes or lines. It's sometimes it's easier to just use mouse. So if you're doing hard surface stuff, uh, yeah, it's totally fine. But I, I think once you start doing this type of work, it's really difficult to do with a mouse. Okay, so let's duplicate this guy first. Cool. So we'll duplicate him. All right, and then we'll do a quick zero mesh. Um, I like 20 by 20 for these guys. Uh, and then we'll do uh, maybe, uh, let's say, 20,000 first. So we'll do zero mesh, see what that gives us. So at this point, I'm really just looking for kind of even geometry. I don't really care about the edge flow or anything. I just want to know that if I subdivide, that it's going to give me relatively even subdivisions in the places that I really want it, right? So like, is there like, are the squares in these areas way different in size than the squares in other areas? You know, so like you have a little bit of stretching in there. That's not that big of a deal. 
I think that's fine. Let's see what it looks like if we subdivide it. It's a good solid base to work on. Cool. So then, um, then what I do is uh, we'll use uh, reprojection. So how many is this? This is thirty-six thousand. Jump change. Let's get this guy up to say at least a million. Divide one more time, and we're at two point three million. That's usually pretty good. Cool. Um, so when you're using project, project uh, will take whatever active subtool that you're on and project it to anything else that has the eyeball on. So right now, um, I have the teeth and everything in there, and I don't want it to project to the teeth. I only want it to project to uh, the previous sculpt. All right. So let's. If I hit uh, shift, oops, shift click the eyeball, it'll turn everything off, and then I can just turn these two on. Uh, now I'm going to go down to one, and then we'll just do a quick project, project all, and eh, it's okay. I usually step up. You don't really have to step up and reproject on every every single one. I just like doing it because I like monitoring if there's any challenges or weird things happening. Um, so we project there. Okay, let's turn that off and see how it's looking. That's pretty good. It's a good it's a good base to uh, continue tertiary details with. Okay, so let's go up to four, and then reproject one more time, or project, not reproject. Cool, there it is. I don't need that guy. We can turn, let's turn everything back on. So shift click and then turn that guy off. Turn off solo. And then there we go. All right. So now we can get in and do all kinds of crazy fun stuff. Oh, that's actually a cool effect. Oh, I kind of like that. Here's what we could do. Watch this. So store morph target. Again, morph target is in tool. Morph target. Um, what you can do is you can just add some of this. Watch this. Kind of like how that is breaking things up. All right, so maybe I don't like that, but when I go with my morph brush, so B M O for morph. And then I can pull some of that out in areas that I don't want it to be in. Check that out. Ooh, snaps. Oh, snappy ruse. That's pretty cool. So that's, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to, to add surface texture, right? Whether it's like using a um, an alpha with a drag rec, or just find different ways to do things. Um, that's kind of the fun of it. There's really no good way or, or bad way to to do it, you know? It's whatever works. I don't want them to look too cat-eyed. So what I'm gonna do is maybe we'll actually bring, so we'll step down Maybe we'll bring all this stuff back in. So you can do little edits. Well, I think little ed little edits are okay, but not not gigantic movements of um, of geo at this point. Really want to handle all that stuff before. So I want this to kind of wrap around the eyeball a little more. Maybe we'll go up to like three. And we'll just pull this up like that. Maybe pull round this guy out a little bit. I kind of like that effect. That's pretty cool. BMO. Maybe I'll I'll just I'll just do a light version of that first, and maybe we'll do 
another version of that uh, on a layer and then pull back on that layer. Uh, for each topology, what program do you prefer? Um, again, it always depends, right? <laughs> oh, it depends. Um, I've been doing most of my like full character retopologies in in Modo, but that's just because that's what I have access to um, at my my home uh, studio. So uh, Maya's good. No, Maya's not really that good. <laughs> I take that back. Take that back, sir. Sorry. Um. ZBrush is actually getting a lot better with with Retopo, um, especially with their their latest UV tools. Uh, it's pretty good, and their Z remesher is actually pretty good. the The last character I did uh, personally, ninety percent of my Retopo was Z remesher. Um, just had to kind of be creative. with some of my decisions. Um, we're going to do this. So sometimes, you know, your little crevices don't quite get the fidelity that you like. Um, so typically what I'll do is I'll go through with just the damn standard and just kind of clean things up just a little bit. Maybe I'll smooth it out a little. Like that. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll come back with a pinch brush and um, just pinch that. A lot of times that will really kind of close that gap a little nicer. Then I'll just hit that in different areas too so that you have a different consistency of what that's doing. So smooth. Damn standard, get a little bit more depth in there, and then pinch. Pinch that. Yeah. So smooth, damn standard. Pinch. Not displace, pinch. Yeah, that kind of handles that um, the trench in there a little bit better. Yeah, Moto's still alive. Yeah. Moto's actually doing pretty good. Okay, we don't have a whole lot of time left. So, what I need to do is... Um, have some more interesting uh, smaller secondary details happening <clears throat> and then we'll go through and just start um, finding some good interesting ways to to resurface and add some some interesting stuff so I'm just gonna kind of do a quick pass um, on some secondary some bigger secondary shapes just kind of get some interesting things happening here. Just add a little bit more fidelity. And again, I'm thinking large, medium, small shapes. Right, so large, medium, medium. Maybe a small shape. Maybe we'll break this one up. There we go. So small, small, medium, large, medium small, large. I also want to make sure that I'm varying up the depth as well too in some of these and 
and then I can kind of make the brush a little bit bigger and kind of get some buried depth in there. Oh, I could do secondary details on this guy all day. But I'm not gonna. Not gonna do it. Is it because I don't have time? Um, you've been using Blender. Yeah, I, I just haven't gotten into Blender. I don't. Ha I haven't had the time um, or the need to get into it yet. But um, you know, I hear lots of good things. Just add some interest in there. It's not so smooth. All right, so now we're starting to get some, some little secondary breakups in there. <laughs> this needs some some love up here. Go back up to, oh, I didn't want to delete lower. Ooh, ooh, that was close. Smooth that stuff out. Let's add some interesting details in there. eyes I'm not really digging at the moment so I think what I'm going to do is grab these guys and pull them out just a touch so instead of trying to get the eye eyelids back away I'm just going to bring let's go down one let's bring that out a little bit more depth there. Okay. Um, let's give the bottom a little bit of love here. Yeah, I, um, I use Moto at home because uh, they have a, a good cheap indie version um, on Steam. That's pretty good. I think it's like it's like 10, 15 bucks a month or something like that. Um, and that was kind of I've been using that for quite a bit before I got into um, Blender. So I've been using that for quite a while. I just haven't really had a whole lot of time to sink into Doing something new. Just maybe add some a little bit more interesting surface breakup through here. That'd be pretty cool. All right, I, th I think I'm gonna go through and do uh, a pass on this. So let's go, let's go up to four, do layers, add a new layer, and then let's store morph target too, just for, just for giggles. All right, so I'm just gonna, just gonna guy go over this. Pretty heavy-handed. 
because I can always pull back out of that with the layer amount and the morph target. So I'm I'm gonna kind of do do it all over, just do a full pass. And that just happened by accident, you know. I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool effect. That that kind of works for this dude. Um, I didn't know that was gonna work. So a lot of times those those happy accidents happen. You know, you just you have to kind of keep your your eyes open for when those happy accidents do happen. And then you can say, well, how can I use that? How can I use that? And we'll just, for good measure, we'll just add a little back here. Okay, so that's pretty, it's a good base. What we can do is, um, let me use my morph brush, and just pull some of those out. Maybe I don't, I don't want them in the crevices down here so much. You know, maybe we don't want them in there. And then we can also pull out um, all kinds of stuff, right? they're in, in too much of a, a line. Pull those out. Just kind of randomize it a little bit more. Like these guys, I don't like the where the where the stroke ended, I don't like how it kind of like doubles up on it. So just pull some of those out. Just trying to take some of the repetitive areas out to make it look a little bit more organic. That's cool. Okay, I think that's that's cool. So then uh how do we take a step even further? Um, I like going back in with inflate um, and then just kind of pulling some areas out a little bit, just varying up that. Then maybe we can go back with um, the dam standard and start pulling out some more. Areas. So uh, I typically use something like this uh, and they just build up uh, layers of details, right? You're like, okay, this is the first pass of the details. Well, what does the second pass look like? Yeah, maybe do a little sculpty sculpt over this and then maybe we can go back to inflate and start kind of building areas up in between some of those you know bigger landmarks 
just breaking up that surface a little bit more. Or what we could do is, um, let's see. Yeah, that's looking kind of cool. Maybe we'll do pull a little bit more out. So BMO for morph target. And I don't necessarily like all of them that are happening in here. So maybe we'll just pull some out in this area. Kind of break it up a little bit. Cool. So um, then maybe what we can do is go to Yo T, what up? Are you like my uh, super awesome pumpkin dude guy? Of your dreams. Hey. What you doing on Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, he a little creepy. He a little creepy. I get that. I get that. I, yeah, yeah, I got you. All right, maybe what we could do then is let's go into surface. No, uh, masking. Mask by cavity. Let's save it first, just in case he dies. We don't want him to die. How you doing, T? Sacramento good? You guys aren't dying of too much heat over there? All right, so we'll do mass by cavity. And then maybe we'll blur that a little bit. Invert it. No, not invert. That one, yeah. Uh, and then maybe what we'll do is we'll go uh, do, 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 deformation balloon. Invade by balloon. What does one look like? Ooh, that's cool. Okay, and then maybe what we can also do is um, maybe instead of one, we can try like 0. 0.5. I don't know, can we do that? Inflate by 0. 0.5? Did it do it? Store morph target, and then we'll do one. Inflate balloon by one. There we go. Nope. I like regular inflate. Let's go inflate by one. Cool. And then, um, so I, I just kind of I do this quite a bit. So I'll go in and just do a couple of like interesting ways of adding detail, uh, and then I'll, I'll just keep moving. You know, I'll do I do another round of something else, and then go back and add add some more. Uh oh, who are you <laughs> who are you sending over? Better send him quick. I gotta I gotta wrap up here in about uh, five ten minutes. You know what I I I couldn't art before I started. I you know when I um started my art journey I couldn't draw a stick figure to save my damn life. <laughs> Circles and squares, yeah I know right. But yeah I I couldn't. 
I can draw a stick figure to save my life, man. But it's just, you know, just with, with any kind of uh, skill, of course you're going to suck in the beginning. You just got to work through the suckiness, you know what I mean? Is that Chris? <laughs> no, was, uh, you just didn't see my early stuff. That's all. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't show a lot of my early work. <laughs> Believe me, it was bad. It was bad. All right, maybe we'll just do a quick paint job on this guy. I think this is, I'm fairly happy with, with where he's at. Um, let do, let do, let do. Uh, so let's kill the layers. I don't like painting on layers. Layers and, and poly paint don't really mesh very well. So I'm just gonna bake all this. Cool, that's awesome. So let's, I, I usually do most of my painting with standard brush, cause I, mostly because I don't like changing the alphas and stuff on any of these other brushes. Um, so let's do spray. Let's do um, a color. Orange is probably a good color. I usually try to go for a mid-tone to start. And then uh, we'll just do, uh, not material, we'll do... RGB, and then fill object. Uh, and then what we're doing, we grab these guys, and we're going to change the material to like a dark. And then we'll go MRGB, fill object. We'll go back to this guy, change back to that. Nope, don't like that one. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, uh, let's change to reflect MRGB. It's not really reflecting, is it? Is it? Nope. Um, so let's try let's try toy plastic. It's always usually a good one. So toy plastic. Oh, it's because I'm not doing... There we go. So now he's got that. Um, I'm just looking for the reflections on this guy. And then maybe we can do like a deep red. What we can do is to get something custom. Um, I've actually been doing a lot of um, 3D, like, but I don't really do a whole lot of painting anymore. Or like ever, really. <laughs> All right, so now we've got some reflections on his eyes. Cool. These guys we're going to fill. Let's do, um, let's, let's color pick this orange, but then we'll go a little bit lighter and maybe a little bit more yellow. So we'll change the hue just a bit like that. And then we'll go, um, let's go Blin and MRGB, we'll go fill that guy. Okay, that's good. And we'll go back to this, change it back to that. Cool. Um, this guy we're going to make, uh, what is it, green? Okay, let's make that guy a little bit green. Uh, we'll do the, maybe like an orange green, something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we'll give him, that one is fine. So we'll just do MRGB. We'll go ahead and fill that one. And this guy... Should we make it blend? No, let's make it that. Okay, cool. Um, so that's good. We're going to color pick these guys. We're going to go to that one. We are going to go blend and fill object. 
go back to this guy. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right, something cool. So once you, if you have subdivisions on, um, you can use this uh, uh, cavity mask, which is not, it's, oh, that button got replaced. That's weird. Um, so if you go into brush and you go into um, auto masking, you have this uh, cavity mask, which is really, really cool. So cavity mask, what that does, so let's go color pick. Hey. Hey, tools. Hold on. Hold up. Hold that thought. Is that everybody? I think that's everybody. Let's go back to this guy. Okay. Uh, so color mask. Um, what I want to do is I want to color pick that guy. And then we'll go something a little bit darker. And then maybe a little bit more red like that. And then I'm just going to... I'm going to turn off MRGB, turn off Z-Add, and turn on RGB. So now I'm painting like this, right? So I'm using the spray, and uh, what it's doing is it's using a, a, a masking curve, basically, to say, oh, I'm only going to affect the high side. Or you can go negative and only affect the low side. <gasps> what? Shut up. As downside is that it kind of gets a little funky monkey in there. Um, so what I like to do too is if it doesn't really work too well, I go into layers. No, sorry. Uh, bu -bu 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 masking. Let's do mask by cavity. See what that gives us. Cool. Maybe we'll blur the mask. There we go. And then now what I'll do is also I'll switch this. And then now I can just paint in here. Right, so like maybe we'll just, we'll turn the mask off, turn the visibility off, and then we'll just start. Just putting in some of this. Let's turn it off. Ah, you guys hear my, my daughter's having fun out there? <laughs> okay. Um. And this is just, I'll just do this for a first pass real quick because you can see like it doesn't really, doesn't really give you like a lot of good fidelity. It just kind of starts getting color into the areas that I really want it to. Oh yeah. All right. And then we'll just, so clear the mask. I said clear the mask, clear. Oh, uh, my cavity mask is still on, that's why. All right, so then I'm just gonna start blocking in some, some colors. I'm just gonna start pushing and pulling values into the areas that I want um, to kind of get punched, you know what I mean? So I'm pushing back some of the darker areas, or so the uh, sunken areas. And I'm using this um, spray because it's, it gives me slight variation in the color, right? So if I'm doing this, it gives me some slight variation, which it really, it, what it does is it's giving me, I think, yeah. Uh, so I like having some subtle subtlety in here. Yeah. Add some through here. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like a grandma. Yeah, I know. It'll add some in there as well, just to pop those out. We'll get some going down here. So again, just kind of blocking in some values using a, a, a darker value than what my current mid value is. Okay, cool. 
Feels good. Getting there. Okay, cool. Then let's um, we're gonna color pick this guy, and then we're just gonna start hitting the high areas with a little bit of just lighter color. Maybe even lighter. Go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> what up, Ash? How you doing? I'm I'm channeling you today, which is uh, the queen of organic on-the-fly modeling creature stuff. Remember all those times I, I come into your streams and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I wish I could I really want to sculpt organic stuff. This is this is that for me. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is this is my like ah man, I want to do more organic sculpting. Come on. Yeah, there's definitely the the teeth definitely um are inspired by by your teeth, not your actual teeth, but the teeth that you make. I'm wrapping up. <laughs> ah, I'm still muted. Thanks. Thanks, T. Always a lifesaver for this one. <laughs> You're still muted, dumbass. Yeah. Anyways, I, I like uh, saying that. I like introducing uh, subtle color variations into some of the darker folds. It really breathes a lot of life into... Um, Into the sculpt, and they're just kind of just touching little parts. Oh, I miss poly painting too. God, poly painting is fun. Next thing you know, you got something that. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not terrible. <laughs> Maybe we'll do some new darker purple in here. Just to kind of give he doesn't have, really have a tongue, so I 
purples, not going crazy, just happy little purples. Happy little purples. And then I'll probably go back and just kind of tone it down a little bit with maybe some red or lively it up a little bit with some red. And then maybe some more gray, dark gray, just kind of even it out just a touch. Happy little purples. And then uh, I definitely want to do some to the teeth. Really want to have some kind of color on the teeth. You really want it just to be a solid fill. So a lot of times I'll just I'll just real quick just give a little little nudge. And then, you know, once you start kind of getting enough color down here, you can just start color picking right from uh, right from here instead of having to go back to the color wheel every single time. Jane getting the love today. I love you, Jane. <laughs> Alright, then maybe we'll grab, we'll just color grab this guy. And then we'll start pulling some of these highlights back out that maybe kind of got a little bit muddled from that pass. We'll just hit eyelids real quick. Just get those punched up. Punch them right in the eyelids. <laughs> the color of the um the way that the color is going down too with the spray is uh, it's working really well with the whole like dippled surface. Um, it's kind of adding some nice texture to it. All right, I think I think we're close. I think we're close to done. I, mean, I could I could probably riff on this dude for quite a while. Let's let's actually. Let's do a little work on this dude. Um, we'll, we'll hit some lows. Um, he doesn't really work too well with the spray, so we're just going to go back to the traditional one. You want him on my porch? On your porch? He is pretty cool. A little wizard hat up here. Yeah, I'm glad you made it, man. It's been it's been too long. I guess it helps when I post like when I'm actually gonna do this on Facebook, huh? <laughs> then maybe we'll hit this with some dark just to kind of give it a little bit of separation. Okay, cool. That works. All right, maybe, we, um, maybe we'll grab, we're gonna color grab here, and then we're gonna lighten it up a little bit. Maybe maybe we're gonna shift it a little bit more towards yellow, and we'll get some some nice subtle hue shifts happening. We'll just. It with a little lovely green. Ha! 
Happy little green. All right, how's that looking? It looks in line. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty, uh, I think we're pretty good there. What do you guys think? Maybe we'll hit these guys with just a touch of the yellow on the tips. Just the yellow. <laughs> so color pick there, and then we're just going to add a little bit more, and then we'll go towards yellow just a touch. And it just helps with that little bit of gradient in there. Yeah, me and T have been friends for a long time. All right, just adds a, a breath of life. Oh, I did not hit those guys with a breath of life, though. Let's do that real quick. So we'll grab these guys. We need to... Oh, yeah, that's better. Oh, that's better. Breath of life. Oh, yeah. Oh, mama. That's good. Okay, and then we'll grow, grab that color, the yellow. There we go. Then we'll just add, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. just make those pop. Because the value of these guys um, are much higher value than what they're sitting against, which makes them pop out. A ton more. Damn you, Dougie, with your bacon. I hate your face, dude. I'm just joking. I had bacon the other night, so it was okay. It's not been that long since I've had bacon. All right, I think that's uh, I think that's it. That's been fun. I think we did. Uh, I'm happy with them. He doesn't have a tongue, but we're not going to talk about that. We've got to give him a name. How about... Um, how about Wrinkles Magoo? I think I think Wrinkles Magoo is pretty good. We'll do that. All right, Wrinkles Magoo would like to thank all of you guys. Oh, thank you very much for uh, coming hanging out and... Uh, uh, hanging out with me and seeing my form. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. And if you would like to, Larry. Ooh, that's a good one too. Uh, if you would like to watch uh, more of these uh, types of streams, definitely check into uh, ZBrushLive.com. There's plenty more where I came from. <laughs> or a bust of Larry. There you go. That's another one. All right, um, got to call it. I'm going to go hang out with the family and um, do do family stuff. So uh, thank you all very much for, for coming and hanging out. Uh, it's, it was uh, definitely a blast today. And um, hope you had fun. I hope you learned a couple things. But most of all, I hope you were inspired to go make your own stuff. So you do it. You get out there and you make cool stuff. Got it? That's from Larry. Larry says that. All right. T, good to see you. And uh, I will check you guys and gals later next time. All right. Have fun. Later.